I have always had bad fish. I mean, they're like the gateway drug that got me addicted to freshwater fish keeping in the first place, right? But after my last beta, Sonic, I just kind of was like, nah, I think I'm gonna take a little break. I'm gonna get a dwarf gourami instead. So, which one do I think is better? Hi, I'm Irene with Girl Talks Fish, and betta fish and dwarf gourmets are actually very, very similar. You know, they're both labyrinth fish, meaning they take gulps of air from the surface. They're about, I don't know, two and a half, three inches long. And then they like similar water parameters as well. Tropical temperatures, they can stand a very wide range of pH and GH. So let's dive into their differences. Category number one is cost. Now I've seen betta fish go anywhere from like three or $4 for a plain old veil tail, all the way to a hundred plus for some kind of fancy seven colored premium thing that I saw online. I personally pay about mm, 20 to $25 for some fancy varieties that I find at Petco. Versus a dwarf gourami, I think I paid like $8 for Unicron. So in this case, I'm gonna give it to the dwarf gourami. Category two, appearance. I think we have to automatically give it to the betta fish. I mean, they are known for their beautiful flowing fins, although there are shorter finned varieties as well, but they basically come in every color, pattern, shape, size, even glowfish version that you can think of versus dwarf gourmies. I mainly see, see three color varieties in the pet stores. There's like the regular blue with the red stripes on it. There's the powder blue variety, as well as the flame dwarf gourami, which is like orange red, and they've got blue finage. I personally like the way that gouramis look as well with their little feeler fins and their kind of blimp-like shape, but both of them are gonna be very visible centerpiece fish. Let's talk about hardiness. In my opinion, both of these fish are ridiculously hardy and can stand up to a ton of abuse from beginners making mistakes. That being said, dwarf gourmies are known for having this iridovirus dwarf gourmie disease, I hope I said that right, where because of inbreeding, they sometimes develop this viral infection. They can have like discolored lesions and lumps on their body. I personally have not experienced this. Um, I've never seen any fish personally have this and I don't know, I haven't talked to anybody personally who has experienced this, but sure, I believe it's out there. Um, yeah. Versus betta fish, everybody hears about them getting sick. You know, they've got Popeye, fin rot, ick, um, pine coning, they're bloated, constipated, egg bound, you know, you name it. People are always saying that they're better fish to stick. And maybe that's just cause people purchase more of them. So I don't know, I guess I'm going to rank them as tied in this one, because again, I, I seriously believe they're both pretty hardy for the most part. That being said, most of my grommies, uh, really all of them, they've never really gotten sick and all of my betta fish, not all of them, but a lot of them have experienced fin rot, whether that's from just having long fins that are more prone to that or tail biting, which I know is more of a behavioral thing, but still, it makes me worried. Speaking of personality, this one's really hard to describe because I feel like it just depends on the fish. You know, some of my garamis and bettas, they'll just come up to the glass and beg for food all the time versus Sonic like hated me and was super camera shy. But I know what you're really here to hear about is aggression. So let's take my past three betta fish and past three dwarf garamis. I would say for the betta fish, Darth Vader was a community fish. Soundwave was aggressive when he was young, but he mellowed out when he was older. And then Sonic was so aggressive that he tore up his own fins when trying to chase other fish. Versus Dwarf Garami's Kai was super mellow. Pain Manning attacked my poor albino Corydoras and had to be removed. And then Unicron, I mean, he's he kind of gets along with everyone except during mealtime, which we'll talk about in a second. Bottom line, it's probably like 50-50 whether or not you can keep your betta or dwarf gourami with tank mates, because it really depends on the fish itself. Is it too aggressive or too stressed out from territorial disputes? Or also the tank mates that you pick. I've actually had really good luck with certain live bears like platies. They just don't seem to mind or get stressed out by being chased by the big angry you know, centerpiece fish. So highly recommend. Food requirements. 
I mean, identical in my opinion. Both Betafish and Dwarf Gromways are gluttons for the most part. Very, very easy to feed, whether it's floating pellets, freeze-dried foods, frozen, you name it. Um, Soundwave, the Betafish, he would guard the food from other tank mates, even when he was an old man. And Unicron, oh my goodness, he's obese <laughs> because he's such a food bully. And even when I feed tiny foods that just scatter everywhere, he's just so much faster at eating compared to the coolie loaches and the pygmy corridoras. So I may have to have their meals and maybe do a second feeding at nighttime and see if that helps. Breeding. I think it's so fun breeding bubble nesters because the male will like put the little fertilized eggs in his bubble nest and guard them. Like it's so cool. The unique behaviors you get to see. I had a lot of fun breeding grommies, although it was honey grommies, but it's very similar in that once they became juveniles, I did not have to separate out the males and the females, like they pretty much could stay together in the same tank until they were ready for sale. However, it was like nearly impossible to find any female grommies. Now, Betafish, on the other hand, very easy to find females. Um, I think Inglorious Bettas recommends going to like the International Betta Com Congress competitions, and then you can talk to breeders there and get like a high quality male and female. However, once the juveniles become older, you will have to jar out the males because they will start fighting with each other. And that means doing lots of frequent water changes or maybe an automatic water change. However, I think bettas will probably be easier to sell just because they're in higher demand. I don't know, I'm gonna put this category as tied, but you guys let me know what you think. If you've been counting, you know that we have a tie. Although I feel like the Betafish's flashy appearance should count for two points because they are without a doubt like one of the number one best sellers of pet stores. As for me personally, I go through phases and right now I am really enjoying having Unicron the Dwarf Garami here in this display tank. But I do look at my office tank sometimes and miss having a better fish. So let me know down in the comments which fish you think should have won. Otherwise, take time to enjoy your cramps and I'll see you in the next video.